Hi everyone! Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, very excited to get going with this. Now, for those of you here last week, you know that I took uh, some Hero Click minis, Hero Clicks minis, and basically what I'm doing is I'm kit bashing them so that I can use them for my game that I'm running at D&D in a castle with Nordic at Caverswall Castle. Uh, the trick was with the game that I'm running, it's got a 1920s theme, which means a lot of the minis that I have, and I have a beautiful collection of minis. Most of them don't work because of how they look. So what I did ended up doing was going over to Hero Clicks minis and sort of revamping them a little bit and giving them an upgrade because it definitely gives me the style and the look that I need and actually price wise it's pretty darn wallet friendly as well. We do have some fantastic people in the chat already. So we have Jan, we have DM, DM Insomnia, we also have Ravenwolf Games jumped in and uh, if you're in there just jump in and say hi. Lurkers are more than welcome to lurk and uh, you can just jump in say hi you don't have to keep going. But last week what I worked on mostly was this Alfred Pennyworth number 10 from the Heroclix uh, Batman Gotham line and he got basically just some highlighting to bring out the details of the fabrics. He also got a wash in from the shoulder down it was Citadel Agrax Earthshade and from the neck up it was the flesh tone that they have uh, in their shade line. Hello big brother and so what I'm going to do today is show you how I'm going to rebase him because yes I still have him on this half moon but what I want to do is get him onto the custom base that I've created as well. Uh, heater is going so if you hear the grumbling dragon in the background that is why the kids are home so I can't exactly turn off the heat this week. If you start having a hard time hearing me I can adjust the volume though. Uh, so let me know if the uh, monster in the corner is out speaking me so to speak. Also worked on this fellow he was the sergeant again from the Gotham City Police Department that they have for Hero Clicks. And basically what I did with him was went through and touched up his paint job a little bit here and there because there were some bleeding areas which got fixed. And today I'm going to focus on getting him fine-tuned and then switch it over to getting him onto a base. Now the nice thing is, is I don't know if you have seen these yet. They have been jumping around on the crafting groups. Uh, Amazon, you can find these, there we go. You can find these, they're basically learning poker chips, but they are perfect for uh, filling as needed bases for your minis because they're an inch in size. They are a little glossy, but I found that my Mod Podge matte brings that right down and really any other matte type of sealer should do the same. But these are what I'm going to be using for some of the hero clicks, not the hero, yes, the uh, hero clicks that I don't want to have on the custom wood bases. Uh, hello Achille and hello Bruce and hello Mio. Lots of people here today. Great to see you. Um, so this is what the sergeant is going to go on to after I'm done getting him all established. And actually he will be staying on his half moon shape instead, which means I am going to go through and obviously just give it a quick paint touch up, but that's going to happen after all the washes are done because otherwise it's a back and forth headache. So that's the plan for today. So the first thing I want to do is show you how I address doing the whole getting him without this onto here. Um, and this again was done using the technique that you'll see on my half beadboard wall video. Uh, it's basically just taking foam core. This is all foam core. I like to use Dollar Tree foam core, texturizing it. And then the spacing happens because of this, I have it right behind me, this lovely little paintbrush cleaner. It's perfectly spaced so that you can use this and just drag it across the foam core and get those really sharp lines going. Um, so check out that video if you want to see how to make some easy wood paneling and then also turn it into floors. So I'm going to get him onto this base and then I'll show you how I paint this base so it has more of that hardwood floor effect to it. And uh, let's see here, and Crispy Bacon just jumped in as well. So what I'm going to need first is my strong pair of nippers. And I know we had the discussion about using the exacto knife and stuff with these guys, which if you want to go that direction, I however need to make sure that I keep my hands safe. I can't be out for a couple weeks here and there, which is why I always default to using tools that I am more comfortable and know will be safer before trying anything that is sharp and can go rogue on you. Uh, if you're in the tabletop crafters group guild, group, guild group, there we go. Uh, you may have seen a couple of interesting posts this week of people who are experts and uh, their hand slipped. Which is why I stress, please, as last resort, use exacto knives trying to release these guys. Do not jump in right away. Um, and hello, Jolene. Good to see you. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep some of this base around him. And let me turn this music down. It gets a little jazzy on me in this one. Um, so basically what I want to do is make sure that I keep a little bit of this black base around his feet because that's going to help me as partially an anchor here. Uh, and while I'm doing that, I didn't mean to plug in my hot glue gun because I will need my hot glue gun. 
Um, and for this, you wanna be using a low temp hot glue gun. If you use a higher temperature hot glue gun, basically what'll happen is it could have the potential of melting the glue on you, or not the glue, the foam on you, because the glue can get hot enough to do that. So this is my tried and true. You see this fellow in my videos all the time. He's oof, 12, 13 years old, something like that. Um, so that's my tried and true. Always go to that one. Let me get him plugged in. There we go. All right, so while this is warming up, I'm gonna start trimming away the excess here. And again, using my nice nippers, I like these guys, they're sharp, they're strong, and they do the job that I need them to. So what I do is basically just line it up, not so it's right up against the foot, but it is pretty darn close, and then just snip away a section. So you can see, I'm just starting to trim it away. And essentially what I wanna do is create like these small rectangles around each foot, and those will help anchor in deeper because you then get this little bit of play of extended length underneath the feet. So that's why I don't try and trim it off completely. I wanna leave a little bit so when it goes to pushing it into that foam, it has something to hang on to. Otherwise, it looks like you can either risk just gluing his feet, but I find that makes it more wobbly and less secure. Or if you go to push his feet in, it looks like he sunk into the wooden floor, which isn't quite the look that I wanna go for. So again, I'm just gonna go through and trim away getting close to but not right on top of. That's really the key here. And it helps to do this in smaller chunks and not try to do it all a big, big cuts just because you don't wanna ruin what you've already worked on paint-wise. Jedi Jim, hello. Did I say hello to you yet? Thank you for stopping by as well. So again, just trimming these away little by little to get it where I need it to be. You may even find you have to change direction or angles as you're doing this just to keep sight of the feet. And again, you just see I'm slowly whittling this away, essentially. But this is what I've done with the other minis that have already gotten the wood floor bases. And I'm glad to see that a lot of people were um, responding well to this and like the idea of using hero clicks. Uh, there are a lot of people out there doing Call of Cthulhu games, which is awesome and happy to have been of help by uh, giving this little tip. Now, I will take this a little bit closer, but I need to basically clear out the uh, bit between the feet before I can really fine tune as well. There we go. So you can see it almost looks like he has, um, you know, his cement boots on. But that gives you the idea of where I'm starting to go with this. This is still a little bit too big, so I'm going to keep whittling this down. And hello, John S. Good to see you here well as well. And the kids do have off of school this week, so if you hear clunky, clunky, squeaky, squeaky, that is my darlings basically just walking around upstairs. <laughs> no elephants, just kids home from school. All right, so essentially I'm getting there, and again, just little by little a little bit goes a long way and the nice thing is because it's got that black going to it it will sort of default to looking almost like a shadow but this is also why I don't paint the base quite yet because you can also cheat and sneak in with a little bit of the paint right now all that base has on it is a mix of 50 50 Mod Podge with graphite gray from, uh, I think that's Craftsmark or Apple Barrel. And that way, it just gets it prepped up and ready to go. I'm gonna try and sneak closer there. Okay, so basically I have him more along the lines of where I want him. It is a little jagged right here, so I'm gonna take my file, which is over here. And I'm just going to carefully buff that down. This is where I like my metal nail files for this one. Yeah, Hero Clicks has a lot of fantastic bargains. Raven Wolf, I agree. Um, all the minis I needed to get for this game, um, for Hero Clicks lines, I don't think I spent over 40, and then of course you get shipping involved in tax, and that ups the price on its own. Um, but it's great for being able to jump in and kind of toy around and create the look you want or need for your game. So again, I'm just going through and I'm filing this down. And again, let me know if that uh, heat gets to be too much. I can always holler for my uh, older one to run upstairs and turn the heat off if we really need it. 
All right, so that's more along the lines of what I want to get right through there. And you can see on the bottom here, there's still some residual nibs, again, that helps with anchoring this in. So that's why I like trimming away the base as opposed to trying to remove it so the feet are freestanding. Because it just gives you that little bit of extra help there rather than having to go in and trying to also pin on top of everything else. Okay, so like I said before, this was done up with uh, Equal Parts Mod Podge matte and the graphite gray. And I leave it at this point to attach the mini because I wanna make sure I get this guy in, set and ready to go before moving on to doing the fine tuning of the painting up the browns and everything like that and the wash that'll happen at the very end. So the other thing I look at is how the base itself is looking with the details. And because it's got some fun wood things, I, I play around with this. I won't necessarily put them straight on like this or even on the horizontal. I think I'm actually gonna kinda have him played like that. I think that'd be a fun way to position him. Yeah, so I'll do it that way. So what I'm gonna do is just very carefully kind of like doing those handprints when you were a kid. Just very carefully wiggle it back and forth and you start to get an imprint in your foam. And then what I do is I go to, I don't know if you guys have seen this knife yet. Regulars probably have, but I have this fantastic hobby knife. This is from Fisker and it gives you a lot more control. So what I'll do is taking this knife I will carefully go in and just lightly score to start removing some of this foam. I don't need to make it a huge big opening because the shoes will work their way down and over, but I'm literally just using this to help me create an opening like that. Hello, Tall Squall, nice to see you, buddy. Tall Squall and I play a uh, Monday night together over on Scraticus Academy in the cipher system I had been telling you guys about doors of Dunera and it is a wonderful magical game and he's playing this fantastic character Tolan so if you're not doing anything Monday nights please come over and join us we start at 7 p.m. Eastern daylight time we're in the EDT time right now not the EST all right so here we go you can see it's almost like little footprints in the snow so now that I have this opening here this means that I will have space Where'd he go? There he is. He rolled away from me. Uh, so this means I'll have space to basically insert his feet and get some room for the glue as well. Now I always start off smaller because what I'll do is go back into, you can see I'm doing it right now, sort of wiggling it back and forth so I can make it work to my advantage. So it's almost hovering over. You can see I'm almost there. This one I want to wiggle a little bit more. Yeah, there we go so it gets more of a flush mount. And I'm not gonna to worry too much about the fact you can see some of the white in the back, because again, we are gonna go over and paint in a little bit. Brew and bindings, oh yeah, talk about a coffee house we wanna have happening. Coffee house with books. Just a quiet place for everyone to meet. I would love to have a place like that in real life. But please do come and join us over there, especially if you want a game that's more like mellow and easygoing. I mean, we still have things to worry about, don't get me wrong. Oh, yes, that's right. And we do the replay at 6 p.m. Thank you for the reminder where um, the players and GM are talented. Alice, uh, we try and be in there in the chat for the replay so we can talk with everyone as they're watching. That elephant is a child. <laughs> uh, but pinning foot. Uh, OK, so Achille, what I mean by pinning is basically it's a means of reinforcing miniatures at weak joints, things like at shoulders, um, hands, if you have to piece them together. You can also use it when uh, mounting them onto bases to make sure there is a stronger connection. I actually did it with my, do I have them over here? I did it with my keg stand bases that I created for uh, the bar. All right, so now he is on here. The glue has cooled. And as you can see, he's nice and secure. And now we'll move into the fine tuning with adding some paints onto here. Uh, so we're gonna get that set up too. And then, oop, let me get my paint. We were in a little bit of a rush this morning because I had to get the kitten from the vet. Um, but yeah, so what I don't wanna do is have to worry about pinning this guy when I already have material underneath the feet that can essentially do the same job. So that gets him in nice and secured. Let's unplug the hot glue gun because that's important. All right, so what I'm gonna first start with for this is I'm gonna use Nutmeg Brown 
from Apple Barrel. And again, we're going to go into like this dry brushing thing. You do want to work with a smaller brush. You don't want to use like normally for big bits of floors. I'll use my wider brushes. This is too big. Uh, I'm going to run the risk of bumping into my mini. So what I'm actually going to jump down to is one of my still a flat head has a slight chisel tip to it. I find that helps too when you want to get into more narrow areas. But this is the brush I'll be using because it'll give me more control over the area I want to work with. So I'm going to first jump into using Nutmeg Brown. That's going to be the first layer of color. When that dries, I'll jump over to using Territorial Beige, also from Apple Barrel. And then I'm going to use a wash that I've kind of mixed up on my own because with all this terrain that I'm making, there is no way I was going to use the Citadel Agrix Earthshade on everything. So I've got this little concoction of my own that I've been doing and I'll figure out the ratios and write it down next time and I will share it with you all because I actually do like it for a dark brown wash. All right, so what I'm going to do, paper towel overhead. Get your paper towel up and ready and next to you. And then I'm just going to dab the brush in. And again, it's a matter of removing the excess. It doesn't need to be a heavily loaded brush. You just want some of the paint on there. And because I'm working uh, with a wood grained floor pattern, I want to work against the grain and the lines of the panels in the floor. So this is where you just jump in and you can always add more to your brush if need be, which I'm going to do because this is a drier, drier brush at the moment. So you can go in and just start dragging it across. And I find it's better, especially with these, to start off a little bit and then increase the load that you have on your paintbrush. Otherwise, it's very easy to overdo it. So you got to be careful about that one. And what you don't want to do is use your paint and have it just fill everything up on you. And then all that detail you put hard work into just totally disappeared on you. All right, so here what I'm doing is I'm getting close to the foot. So I'm going to take a little bit more on the brush than I've been doing for on the floor itself and just very gently work that around one of the feet and then pull that back and over. Same thing for the front area. And there you go. So you can see the paint color starting to load up a little bit more gradually. Um, again, it's a smaller area, so it's a lot easier to kind of get too much going at once. Nice thin coats and just work your way that way. And while you could technically do this to the larger bits before you put the mini on, you then have to go back in anyways and fill in the removal of basically the foam where you've put those feet. I'm surprised the furnace is running again. Oh well. Again, if you can hear me, great. If not, there are ways of fixing this. We have ways for you to hear me talk. The nice thing is, is this will go quickly for that second layer and also will dry quickly, which is nice. Work between the feet here. And again, I'm just going to get a little bit onto the brush and work on filling in where I'm seeing the exposed foam now and getting a little bit more on those feet where the black base has been. That'll just help mute it into the base itself. And if you remember, this is an NPC, this is Rufus, he's one of the kitchen staff at BB's place. So essentially what I've decided is that all of the kitchen staff and the wait staff and the regular NPCs at BB's will all get this particular floor base. Everyone else is going to be getting just the plain black circle treatment, just to make it easier on me to be able to quickly identify which ones I really need to make sure are there and I can grab as I'm doing the table layouts. And uh, yeah, that's going to be another fun thing to prep for is getting everything packed up for the suitcases. I'll let you know how that goes. I'm kind of saving all these little random boxes so I can start creating compartments and whatnot. I do have tackle boxes lined up as well. So again, doing the same thing around the edges, just getting this nutmeg brown on. Now I do find when you have the exposed cut surface where it's more of like the um, openness to the foam. You can see sort of like a spongy texture. This will suck up paint faster so you may find you have to put a little bit more of the paint on to the brush to get the color that you want. But yep, just work it around the edges too. And we'll give them a couple hot minutes and then we'll go back in with a territorial beige. And then I'll do the wash to show you what that looks like when all is said and done. Oh my goodness. So how is everyone doing in the chat this week? 
we have spring break going on here, so it's been uh, definitely a change in the routine for us. But the kids are being really good. They're actually going out and playing because we're finally getting warm weather. I'm not even having to say go outside and play, which is awesome. All right, right now I'm just going back in and again adding some more of this paint in to hide the white foam that got exposed here and there. I think we're getting close to where I want this. I'm going to do just a little bit more on the top. Oop, that is a side I forgot. I was going to say, I don't think I got all the sides. There we go. Now that's all the sides. So yeah, basically trying to figure out everything I can use to keep these suckers safe as I transport them. I will have to check bags. There's just, there's no way around it. There's no way I can carry everything on one carry-on. So cross your fingers, it all gets there safely. All right, so here, this is the amount of paint I want on this. You can see we're starting to get the nice warm wood tone. We're also keeping the grain of the wood. Someone come and cut my grass, <laughs> co-signed. <laughs> Yeah, our grass is finally starting to grow. We have leaves and oh, my cherry blossoms are blooming. So those are pictures I'm gonna be sharing on Twitter as soon as I can jump outside this afternoon and get photos. All right, so you can see, this is pretty much where we're going with this. I do wanna get that little bit of white there. This is why I like to turn it around a little bit and look things over a little bit more. Just carefully, carefully. Okay, that's better. All right, so we're gonna let him dry. While he's drying, we're gonna jump over to the sergeant. Let me just rinse my brush so I don't have a dried up stiff brush. That would be bad. I had friends asking me, oh, are you going anywhere for spring break? I was like, uh, no. <laughs> uh, I've got a lot of traveling coming up. I don't want to travel for spring break. Let's see, Bruce is asking, whoops, pardon my hitting the camera. Do you nor don't, don't you normally add a bit of yellow to your brown for woodwork? I will, yes, but in this case, um, this is already a warm tone paint, so I'm not adding yellow to this one because the nutmeg has the warm undertone and I don't wanna get too crazy with loading up a bunch of colors. These are meant to be quicker minis for my you know bigger pieces of wood. I absolutely will do um, the different loading of colors. In fact, I did that with the bar that I just finished. I did the sweet potato and golden sunset underneath a layer of, what was that brown? I think it was oxide brown, um, but that's that. those are pictures you can find on Facebook as well as on Twitter. All right, so we're going to jump over to the sergeant. He was cleaned up. We also removed the sloth-like eyes where one was way up here and one was way down low. So what I want to do first is I'm going to first jump into bringing out, he has folds in his pants, but again, the paint is so flat. I mean, you can get it if you angle it towards the light. But let's face it, this is not going to be the way this mini is really displayed. So I want to bring out the folds in those pants. What I'm going to do is jump over to using pavement, see if pavement is light enough. If not, I'm going to add a little bit of a lighter gray. And then I'm going to work, move over to his coat and work on getting his coat dry brush to bring out the folds in those. And then we're going to move into the washes for his shoulders and down and the hat as well. As for the face, I think I might be brave and try giving him at least some eyeballs back. Uh, we will see. I was trying to actually figure out, keep getting a shadow. I think the eyes themselves are even, I think it was more the factory paint where it got away from them, which is why we ended up with uh, Sergeant Sloth. So let me get over to doing that. So again, like I said, I'm going to start with pavement. See how pavement looks on the pants. I'm not really going to bother too much with that. I'll just work from the lid because it's such a little amount that you need. I think pavement will be light enough. Let me find my more narrow flat. Eh. Here we go. All right, so another, this one's a little bit even more narrow than the other one, which is why I want to use it. Just get it dampened down a little bit. Kara has to deal with this well, Mia, three rounds already. Yeah, my husband is trying to put it off for as long as possible, simply because it's like once you start then it's weekly. You got to get that lawn mode, all that good stuff. Always fun. All right. So kind of the same thing like I just showed, except this time I'm going to use it on the pant legs and I'm going to just gently brush up, trying to keep it away from that lovely tan coat. I think what I might even do is jump into using, yeah, I'm going to jump into using a narrow brush on this because that's too close to the coat. All right, yeah, and then bumping the camera. 
Let's alter that. There we go. Stop shaking. All right, so what I'm going to do is taking a fine tip brush, I'm basically just going to, by hand, bring out all these folds. It doesn't take too terribly long, but that little bit does make a difference. So when you're doing this, it's basically just look for the raised folds and add a very thin line of paint along them to, add, to help add some shadows and height as well. So right now I've got the, you can see it right here, you can see the folds that I've already addressed. Painting eyes, your ultimate ne nemesis. Yeah, it's not fun. Major credit to those who can paint eyes and not even have to hold their breath. I am not one of them. <laughs> but right now I'm just literally working the tip of the brush. It's basically just hovering over the mini itself. You don't have to press down hard if you have just the right amount of paint on but this will help enhance those folds a little bit so not everything's dropping into the flat look. Can't remember, this guy is just labeled Sergeant. There's no name for him. He's just labeled Sergeant, Gotham City Police Department for the Hero Clicks line. Um, of course you have your uh, Commissioner Gordon. He's got his name on a whole bunch of the different style minis they have for him. But this guy is just a Sergeant, no special name. What I'm gonna do is also go around the cuffs of the pants and give that a little brush with this pavement. Again, just to kind of give some depth to it. If he has a name, it's not in the Heroclix listing. So I don't know if it's Bullock. I'm not sure what his tag name is, who they intend him to be. And it could just be my invoice like had that little bit of information out we shall see oh Jolene you're working on here comes for a wedding <laughs> I used to work at a florist where I did the bridal flowers which meant like the bouquets the boutonnieres the hair pieces and all of that for various reasons okay so we've got the paints I do like the pavement on this one it's just enough of a color change without it being drastic so I'm also going to put this onto his tie edge around his ID and then it is Bullock. Okay, cool. So we've established it's Bullock. And then I'll also get his head, well, not his head, but the band around his head on the hat. So I'm just going to take the tie and give one edge of this a little bit of pavement. The older you get, the harder it is to keep painting away from the kneecaps. <laughs> So you can see just that little bit of a highlight will make all the difference. All right, mystery solved. Sergeant Bullock. The more you know. Do 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 do. And it's just these little touches that really do sort of amp this up a little bit. So it's not just the. Uh, let me brave and put a little bit here. Just your typical. Yeah, you got the mini, you slapped it on the table, pre-painted situation. I'm also just double checking, double checking the pants to make sure. Yeah, let me blend that a little bit. There is a fold right there that kind of got lost. There we go. Yeah, same over here. One more fold on this side I want to capture. There we go. That'll work. So yeah, I was always... Uh, Dealing with bridezilla types more often than not around this time of year. Oh my gosh. From here until usually October was wedding season. Most brides are lovely. There were a few that got very interesting. So I'm literally just doing a nice little s tight small band towards the base of it for the hat. And I think that's going to call it for us for the pavement, which I used. Rinse the brush and we'll jump over to using, what color did I pick up? I'm going to jump over to beige, basic beige for the coat. We start off with suede. Now we're raising the color up to beige. So I'm going to rinse this. Get this blotted up. Jolene, you did the flowers, yeah. That's fun though. 
So the wedding's this weekend, as I'm guessing. All right, so with this, because you can see there are definitely a lot of folds happening here, but again, you get, this is even three foot, this is probably a foot away. Of course, it's blurry because the focus, because I try and focus it up closer to where I'm working. You can see even just a little bit away, everything goes and flat because there's no demarcation, delineation of these really fantastic fabric details, which makes all the difference. So I'm going to get my beige going and do the same thing and just dry brush it. And that way it gives a little bit more life to the thing, to the thing, to the coat. That's what I want, to the coat, to the thing. So yes, we had uh, Doors of Dunera Monday night at 7. I was doing Nightborn yesterday. That's a Numenera game. Starts at 2 p.m. over on Scratch Channel. And then today is today, which I love. I love the live streams where I get to chat with you guys. And then tomorrow is uh, Dawnbringers. Got the whole gang back together. Even our Talmud is back. Jeremy will be joining us again. And then Friday night, I'm back over on Nerdarchy, and we're doing a one-shot. Uh, it's Revilio, I believe, is the name of the game that we'll be playing. Uh, so excited for that one. I created up a new PC, NPC, no, NPC, no, PC for uh, that game. And she's a ranger. Surprise. <laughs> but I'm using one of the races from the Servilio and I'm excited because they have some really cool race options. So if you like seeing how people do different things with D&D &D and different campaigns, please come and join us. It starts at 8 p.m. over on Nerdarchy. I don't have the uh, link up here in my head because it's a very specific link. But if you check out Nerdarchy um, on their YouTube page, they should have that locked and ready for you and information going. Their Facebook page has been compromised. <laughs> Saw yesterday it's been commandeered, hacked, something, a little bit of both. So they've been having some issues with that. Dave can't get onto uh, the page right now. So anything you're noticing, as far as I know right now, is because it has been uh, taken away. All right, this is actually kind of light, so the light's not picking it up. But there we go. It's starting to pull out the folds a little bit more. I'm actually wondering, I might go lighter. As this is drying, that'll happen sometimes. You think you have a light color, and as it oxidizes, the color jumps down. So I'm going to just grab a lighter paint. I have a whole new paint storage back here. That's just the top. But I love it. Um, no. Not ice cream, maybe. This one. We'll do the uh, folk art parchment, not the apple barrel parchment, which I know sounds weird, but they do have slight different undertones. Fourth of May. Nice. May's a beautiful time of year. I love it, especially for weddings. All right, I'm going to jump down to using this parchment, which is almost my skin tone. <laughs> I'm painting it with V. Uh, <laughs> I love how that actually no that's right we've done this before where parchment is like pretty much and you go to those places it's like they make your foundation make me match parchment so let's go back in and try it with parchment instead and yeah just enough of a color difference that's what I want so it's always good to test it out in just a little corner of your project before going ham and doing everything and then realizing oh I, I did that for absolutely no good reason I've got, yep, there's like a glob on one side. Now the one thing I did notice, and this is from the factory, there's like these weird air bubbles from the casting, which if I were stripping this and going from scratch, yeah, I would definitely be buffing out, but honestly, like I said, these are more, I need these minis there to act as secondary NPCs. They're not getting the royal treatment. There are minis that are definitely getting far more of the, uh, finer detail treatments like the BB mini she's getting a lot of love but these guys they're gonna be on the table for just a short blip if at all so I'm not that's where you need to decide how much attention do you want to put into each of your minis do you want each mini to be you know showcase contest quality or do you want them to be like oh cool you know you get who it is from three feet away and uh, let's see here which oh, it's not a game that I'm playing with the Batman minis it's a uh, my homebrew that takes place in the 1920s so I needed miniatures that had more of a modern look to them so they're being altered accordingly and May the 4th Jolene oh do I have May the 4th my husband was hoping that our youngest would be born on May the 4th he was not 
because he desperately wanted to be able to say, may the fourth be with you. Of course, whenever I hear may the fourth be with you, I and also with you. So 11, Catholic, 11 years of Catholic school will get you. And also with you. All right, I am gonna switch over to using that smaller brush again on the sleeves in the front of the coat. Yeah, this is a uh, pill bottle. It helps really well with holding these minis. So the back part, I'm using this wide brush. The front, I'm gonna go back in and take care with a thinner tip so I'm not mucking everything up. Muck a muck a muck. Muck a muck a muck. But you can see that we're starting to get it's always harder with the light colors to show it off. Camera would show it to you, no problem. Webcams, different story. But you're getting a sense of that. All right, so now let's move to the front of the fellow. Rinse this brush again and switch over to the smaller one. Did I put that one back? I think I did. So yes, jumping back over. Mm. No, you're not it. Oh, you know what? I'll use you. There you are. <laughs> Too many brushes. Too many brushes. All right, so same thing. I'm just going to go like I did before and by hand. I am going to add it to this edge. And then just pull it up these folds here. And when the wash goes on, it's really going to help things pop a little bit more visually. May 4th is your mom's birthday. Well, happy birthday to mom. Uh, we're getting close. 10 days early, right? Same thing, I'm just taking some even small strokes, bringing it down the edge. And this is why I moved to the smaller brush, because we have folds under here, but if I try to use it with a flat brush, I'm running the risk of things getting mucked up together, which I don't want to have happen. And we'll get around the cuff. Give that a nice sharp edge there. And then again here you have some more of that casting funkiness. I'm gonna see if I can kind of see if I can play that away a little bit. I'm just gonna try and add in a couple of fake folds essentially. You can go in and add more fabric detail by doing fake folds. So right now I'm just sort of playing that there are creases there to sort of camouflage what's happening. So you can always go in and do that just to kind of help out if you've noticed a certain piece has got a funky little detail or you know you could have sworn you got everything off maybe not so much and I'm going around to the lapel and that's a little bit too much thumbnails are great if you're trying to get the paint narrowed down a little bit you can also go back and grab some if you want helps to get the tip back to uh, peak performance, no pun intended. Keep working on the shoulder here, and I'm slouching, don't slouch. This bed for your posture. Have you seen those devices they're selling now that make people sit up nice and straight? It's like this, it's almost like a backpack, but there's no backpack part to it. It's just the straps and like this, for lack of a better word, it's like there's a board on the back portion. This is the stuff you notice at like 2 a.m. when you can't fall asleep. It was one of those infomercial deals. I'm doing the same thing here. I'm kind of almost overdoing these folds just to kind of, again, hide the slightly funky texture we had going on there. Which again, for these, oop, mass-produced ones. Sleep. Think. up and over and I will get the cuff again this makes it a little bit more time consuming when you go in with just using a fine tip brush on the folds but if you don't want to, have to go back and repaint over things it helps a lot now next week 
Fingers crossed, I should have a new, actually a few new minis that Miguel got pulled together for me because he's the one who helped me out with the crocodile family, Mama and Cal. And what I'm hoping to do is start painting one of those up next week for our live stream. And it is um, one of the critters from Cobalt Press's Creature Codex, which that's like one of my fam favorite books. Um, it's famous in our house because it's pretty much one of those books where I'll use it, my husband uses it, the kids will grab onto it and just take a look. The little guy just loves to read through about it, and the other one loves to use it because he'll he'll work on plotting his own games now. Okay, so that's got his coat a little bit more evident now, and I'm going to go around the brim and the top of the hat with the same color, again to heighten it. So for this, I'm going to turn him over and just edge around his hat, literally along the edge of the brim. Oh, and I am going to get, while we're here, we'll get the back of the collar. But this is literally just taking the side of the brush and letting the paint play along the edge. And then we'll let him dry a little bit, jump back over to the other base. And then he'll get his wash, because he really only needs a wash after this point. Okay, so that takes care of the brim. Now the top, I don't know if you can see, the top has some fun folds and everything. I want to play around with getting those brought out a little bit more as well. So I can get this so it stays in frame, but I can still see what I'm doing. And again, it had that bubbling thing going on with its plastic, so doing what I can to play around with that. Okay, yeah, so just, just a little touch like that. More on the edge here. All right, so that takes care of pretty much most of him. I'm going to let the washes help out with the rest and bring that through. Oh, I do want to try and play with the eyes. Let's see. Let's see if I can do the eyes. All shall be revealed. And I'm literally just going to do like little, little dots. I'm not going to go too gonzo here because his eyes are actually quite small and sort of like he's got them scrunched up anyways. So I am going to run back over to my pavement. I wonder if my dot tool will be narrow enough. That's not the dot tool. That was what was sitting next to the dot tool. I'm just going to check and make sure that, because this might be actually a little bit too, because like I said, the eyes are narrowed, so this might be a little bit too much. It's going to be tight. I'm going to use a paintbrush. We're going to go for it. And yes, I'm using my tongue to tip the brush. <laughs> All right. Moment of truth, people. Moment of truth. Of course, now I've got to get him tucked so I can see and you can hopefully see. Let's put it this way. As long as he's not looking like sloth, <laughs> that's an improvement. All right, we've got one eye, one eye with a presence. Now this is, brush has got a little bit of a curvature to it, which actually, sometimes it helps when your brushes have a curve. Hey, there we go. And we don't have the, hey, you guys factor going on. What I'm going to do is let the wash do the rest and bring out the other details. Great. Um, the other details on his face. And that's where I'm going to use that flesh tone wash on him. So we're going to let him dry a little bit because if I do the wash now, I'm running the risk of the paints being too wet still, which we don't want that to be the case. I'll rinse this one off and we're going to jump back over to Rufus and his face. And then we'll finish up with uh, Sergeant Bullock. Yeah, fingers crossed, and it worked. Oh. All right, we'll pop the suede over here. Not the suede, the uh, parchment. 
Now I'm using Territorial Beige. Lisa one. This is a good color. I like this. This is the nice, um, it's actually sort of a neutralish, medium brown, lighter brown, I should say. Slightly warmer, but I found it does also play nicely with cooler tones, which is interesting. All right, back over to that brush from before, one with the chisel tip to it, and I'm going to go back in with this. And this is really to help bring out the details of the wood grain. So I'm gonna have this hover over. And you can see that brings that all out. And then when the wash goes on, it brings it back down to another brown and then it'll be good to go. I'm not gonna focus too much around the feet because I don't wanna highlight the edges of that too much. Made it look easy as pie. Well, thank you, gutter crawl. I lucked out. <laughs> sometimes it happens. Sometimes you're swearing like a sailor and you're having to start over again. It truly happens to everyone. So right now I'm focusing this pretty much on the wood details to bring out that grain and everything. And you can see all that lovely wood grains back. Yay. Hooray. So get this on. Yep. And just lightly hovering the brush over. First focusing on getting the flat area like so. Okay, so you can see all that wood grain detail now. Now what I want to do is I want to go around the edges and just give them that nice little stronger bit of line. Because I just like the way that finishes off these pieces. So I'll do that. I use a mix of brushes, Achille. I have some, it's not makeup brushes. Um, I'll use nail brushes because I find those are very helpful. And then I also have Plaid sending me Plaid actually has some fantastic brushes that they've come out with that I love for mini painting. Um, so I've started using those as well. Their Mod Podge ones for some reason were really strongly on the mark. So if you see the Plaid Mod Podge brushes, grab those. They were quite, quite good in my book. Again, I don't get caught up on specific brushes all too often just because I find get stuck on one you're not going to figure out what else is out there all right so I'm going to also do this on the corners just the just the corners themselves draw a little bit of the paint down and that gives us our wood floor that just needs a wash for itself and then I'll seal it using the Mod Podge matte mod podge ultra matte which has become my new sealer just because i really like i like how it looks when it's on the minis and it's really done a great job protecting them so that takes care of alfred who again before the wash this needs to dry i'm not touching it right now if i did it's just going to be a muddied mucked up mess i don't want to do that i've put too much work into this i don't want to do that so patience is a good thing to have when it comes to this stuff just get this cleaned up and I was saying Agrax, I meant Nuln Oil. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is the Nuln Oil on his pants for our sergeant. I'm not gonna worry about the tie so much because if I do that on the tie, it's gonna make the white shirt gray. Um, and again, for those who are like, I don't like Citadel because of their bases, this has been my godsend. You can tell they get a lot of use. This is what I'll use for my Citadel pots. It keeps them from tipping over. They are a beautiful, Beautiful thing. Uh, Thingiverse has them. I literally just did a Citadel Pots search and that's what came up. And they have some that are stackable and things like that too. Uh, so yeah, if you have access to a 3D printer and you like Citadel, I recommend getting those. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to take this over the pant area. Staying away from the trench coat. I don't want the trench coat to look like a gray trench coat. If I wanted it to be gray, I would have painted it gray. And I'm just gonna do this. And get all around. And then what you're gonna see I'm gonna do for this to dry, instead of having him dry standing up, I'm gonna have him dry lying down because that's really gonna get into these folds that are in the front of the pants. The back of the pants don't really have as many of those folds, so there's not so much of a need to make sure that is resting right up against them. 
I'll just sneak it in here. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. We're going to give him a couple minutes to dry. We'll actually close the pot because my luck. And we're just going to let them dry here. Now, I did get a chance to work on a few more of the um, police force. So I will get those pulled out so you can see what they look like, as well as on those bases that I was talking about before. Um, ba -bum. Oompa Loompa. I don't know why that just came into my head. So I did, over the weekend, work on more of the police figures. Because, again, time is of the essence. And I have these great little... Let's move you a little bit, sir. I have these great little tackle boxes that I'm going to be using uh, to help me with getting them there. It's just a matter of putting, I think, probably just some bubble wrap on top to keep everything from shifting around. But here is this lovely fellow. He pretty much got the same treatment where it was just dry brush wash. And his clothes have a lot of cool folds in them that were not at all evident. So I went through and I took care of that. Uh, the body got the Nuln oil uh, through here in the collar. That I did the, let's get the official name for it, the Reichland Flesh Shade. So that went on the face and the yellow and the white portion of this. And that literally in and of itself, 10 minutes later, the guy was good enough and I put him onto these bases. And again, these are those fun poker chip one inch bases that you can use. And that gives you what you want for that one. So got him all taken care of. Here's Commissioner Gordon. Now, Commissioner Gordon had yellow pants, which that really wasn't flying for me. So I went through, gave him gray pants. Him, I did want to have gray pants. And then just kept that nice dark brown trench coat look going for him. So it was um, Agrax on his coat. It was the flesh tone on his pants and the shirt as well. And uh, his glasses were pretty good, so I didn't fiddle around too much with the glasses either. But that got me what I wanted as well. Uh, normally use a fine point sharpie to dot the eyes. Yeah, that's another thing you can do. One thing I have found though, Raven, is every so often, depending on which, whichever seal you use, some of those will make your permanent markers run because of the accelerant in the spray or the uh, thinner they keep in the uh, product itself. So be careful when you go to paint your minis after you've used markers on their eyes. Sometimes permanent is not so permanent because of the solution in another product. So just be careful with that. And same thing for these police guys. I didn't do too much craziness with them. It was really more just bring out the folds in their uniforms and the details here and just seal them up after I put uh, washes on. This was a uh, nightshade, Draken off nightshade, and then back to the noon oil for the vest. And their faces, their faces, surprisingly, the paint wasn't so bad. And once I got the wash in there, I was quite happy with that. Um, so those were the styles that I got completed up in that respect. This is going to be the police force container. Now, someone did ask about the whole... Where did I put the bar? It's over there. Someone did ask about the whole yellows underneath wood. Let me grab that really quick. So these were, these are 3D prints. Um, I have the links on my Facebook page in the album there. So these are, well, this is the wooden bar. And yes, these did get yellow involved in this. Basically what happened is uh, painted them, burnt umber, uh, kept it a lighter coat, didn't get into the nooks and crannies because I didn't want to keep all this lovely wood grain detail. After that, I went in with a makeup sponge, picked apart like I've shown you before, and... Um, but I basically did a start doing layers. So the first layer was burnt umber, then graduated up to sweet potato. This is all apple barrel. Graduated up to sweet potato, then moved on to golden sunset. Let those all dry because I did want the colors to intermingle a little bit. Once those dried, I then did my little homebrew dark, dark brown wash that I have going on. And again, I'll get the recipe written up. Once that dried, I then moved on to brown oxide um, for the top portion again sponging it on not dry brushing or anything just using that makeup sponge because it does act like a dry brush and it also helps kind of blend the colors together and then when that dried I did another layer of the wash because I really wanted to bring these out another layer of the wash and then I just went around with khaki and I just did some edge work on the bars themselves but yes if you want a very warm rich color wood put your oranges and your yellows in there underneath your browns because it's really going to give it a nice little pop 
to the color rather than everything having this flat, almost grayish look to it that can happen sometimes if you stick to cooler tones with woods. Uh, so that's how I did the bar for that one. And uh, let's see here. I'm going to check and see if... Yeah, he's drying up so you can see it's not as wet as it used to be. So I'm going to move on to doing the flesh tone on him now. I guess it's a little shake. Yeah, so Raven Wolf, since you use the sealer from a pot, you're definitely in the safe zone. A lot of people I know like to stack up their minis. And I don't blame you, because if you have a collection of minis that all need to be sealed, it's a lot easier to line them up like little soldiers and spray away. Um, but those are the ones that are the guilty party for making your uh, ink run. So just be careful with that. Just a heads up. I'm not saying don't do it, because actually, yes, it can very much help. Just be aware that you might have to backtrack a little bit. In fact, I did it on purpose with the book golem tutorial that's coming up because I know it would make the ink bleed a little bit because I used uh, Sharpie basically. But because I knew it was going to make the ink bleed, it did exactly what I wanted it to. And it makes the pages look a little bit more antique than like someone had spilled something and things like that. So there are ways of manipulating mistakes to actually be beneficial to you. So once you know it does that, you can be like, oh, well, if it's going to do that, then it's going to do this for me. Let me use it for that project. So now basically the rest of this is getting all of the flesh tone on here. just to bring out the folds and not darken it up too much. And you will find with this one, just kind of dance it around a little bit. You don't want it to get pulling up too much. And just keep moving it around. And as it dries, it will help bring out those details as well. And if you find you have a spot, like right here, I have a little bit too much around the tie, just go back in with your brush, slide it down, and you can blot it off on your paper towel so it pulls it up so you're not getting as much collecting there than you wanted. I always save the faces for last just to be safe, but I'm also moving to using a smaller brush again because I don't want this to bleed everywhere. So a little bit of a section at a time is where I'm going. Get up and around the collar. I do want to get into those seams. Let's see here. Dot the eyes with a pot. Yeah, if you do a protective coat over the eyes, you could do a mass treatment that way. Uh, again, it's just make sure your inks are protected first before the accelerant touches them. And thank you, Bruce. I'm glad you like the bar. I actually am very happy with how that bar came out. I'm telling you, 3D printer is a huge help in getting a lot of these things ready because as much as I would like to make by hand every last little detail, not physically possible for me. Uh, just with time and everything. So we've been able to print out a few things. And then for me, it's just take a couple hours, one weekend morning and paint it up. And it's made a huge difference. I'm actually going to take those um, bases to the bar, tweak them a little bit so that I can use them for the kitchen. Because I realized I don't have the kitchen stuff set up yet. And there's stuff that could happen in the kitchen. Paint more than a couple figures a month. Well, hey, at least you know you have that in the back of your mind as a uh, go-to trick. Nothing wrong with that. Just because you're not using it right now doesn't mean you won't use it in the future. Tricks help. Contrary to popular belief, tricks are not just for kids. I kid. Okay, so he's getting a lot more. I'm kind of staying away from here right now because there's like this tiny little bit of wet null oil. My like I touch that and then a mess. A mess, so I'm leaving that section off for a little bit. Let me get through here. Yeah, this side's dry enough. I can get in there now. And then we're going to get the hands. Now again, his hands got a little funky because of his actual print. It's almost like elephant man mode. Sometimes I will just blot the top of the fingertip. Yeah, that did it for me. 
And I'll do the hat and then I'll do the face and let him dry. Here we go, the hat. And I will, of course, once he's ready, go in and take pictures so everyone can see him. All set up, ready to go. Just pull a little bit off. Did I get under? I did not get under. And then what I'll do is I go back in, I'm just smoothing the wash out just a little bit more here and there. And this is bringing it more to the It's funny, the puddles show up on the camera before they actually show up to the naked eye. Looking at the camera right now. Alright, now I'm going to get his face, and I'll see if I can sneak that in. Oh, but he sure looks a lot better than he did before. <laughs> no more hair, guys! Now I want to watch that movie. Might have to watch some Goonies tonight. Okay. So his face is addressed as well. And now you can see he's got that mouth and nose in there. Yay! Uh, is that dry enough yet? Let's try. Let's hope I don't regret it. All right, good. Whew. That was dry enough. All right, he's going to dry. I'll put him over there for now. And then I'll get the wash onto the other base, the new, the wood base. Now this mixture is one that I've kind of concocted of my own. And I actually need to mix it. I haven't used it in a couple days, so I need to mix it up again. Uh, there it is. Where's, no, that's the wrong one. Where's my stir stick? There's my stir stick, which is basically two stir sticks, two stir sticks kind of spaced out from each other. Um, this is essentially what I did is I've gotten these special effects, oh, media things. And what it does is it gives an antique quality, but not to the type of crafts that we normally do. So I've taken that paint, thinned it out, and I added a little bit of black paint to it. So it's created almost like a burnt umber level of wash. And then I added in some flow. What's it called? Uh, flow improver. So it runs nicely and some distilled water. Distilled because if you use tap water, you run the risk of your uh, Minerals, that's what I'm looking for, for the minerals to work their way into your wash. And then it can sometimes do funky things depending on your colors and so on and so forth. There's that spiel. All right, so now moving over to this guy. I'm going to do a nice healthy coating, especially around the feet so that this gets into those grooves and helps with any bit of white foam that might still be hiding on me until later. And just put a nice good layer on this. And I really want it to get into those grooves. So I'm not so much brushing as I'm blotting it on. And then I'll let this dry. And you end up with bases like the ones I showed you last week, which I don't have near me at all. I put those minis elsewhere, so I can't jump up and get them. But this is the last step that I did for the custom wooden base. Just make sure it gets its wash on here. And definitely let this dry before you seal it up. But that takes care of the wooden floor. So it looks like a nice wood floor. So that guy's going to dry. The commissioner is, not the commissioner, the sergeant is also drying, which is fantastic. And where did I put him? Oh, they're right there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint him up his base. I'm actually going to use the pavement. Because on the base, there's, you know, you can see there's some nicks and whatnot. I'm going to get that painted up black, and then I will attach him onto one of those chip bases, and he will be set and ready, which is actually what I wanted. And then obviously seal them. Seal them, seal them, seal them, especially because I'm traveling with them. I'm making sure things get sealed, because I don't want these chipping if I can help it. I'm already planning on making sure I have, like, you know, super glue, emergency super glue and uh, E6000 on me for some things, but... Oh boy, got to be careful. Let me just wiggle him slightly to make sure. Now I do like using that blue tack. People have said, how do you keep it from sticking to the minis? For the most part, it won't. If you find a little bit does, you just gently go back in and blot it back over the original sticky tack and it comes up. 
So I'm just going to go in here and paint up the base to hide the stray paint marks, etc. And then we'll glue him on and then he too will be a completed miniature for what I need. But I really cannot encourage you enough, especially if you're doing more modern themes or if you just want a faster way of getting some minis on the table and you don't have the time to do a full paint from scratch, you know, coming from the metal, the resin or whatever, this is a good way to do it. It's a good way to get you some minis on the table without putting in tons and tons and tons of work and feel like you can't catch up because you have so many you want to get done for your campaign. So hopefully this has proved to be helpful for you and given you some ideas. Definitely, I got these guys from Troll and Toad. They have not sponsored this in any way, shape, or form, YouTube. Um, it's just a website we've used before in the past, so I felt comfortable ordering from them. The minis got to me quickly. They came nicely packed. Oh my gosh, I think I got more bubble wrap with those guys than I have with any other minis ever. Um, so they take packaging them seriously, making sure they get to you nice and safe and protected so on and so forth. So that's that's a website I would recommend giving them a look. Um, eBay, of course, is another option. However, do keep in mind, you have individual sellers, so I can't speak for everyone on eBay that, yes, you're going to have a grand experience because, you know, unfortunately there are people out there who aren't as um, reputable. So just be aware if you're doing something like that. Um, you know, other sites, they also have them. It's just... Uh, Shop around and see if you can find a good deal for yourself. And I'm telling you, if you have a budget, this is definitely a very good and helpful way to get your mini collection a little bit beefed up, especially if you just need those secondary NBCs. They're not NBCs that are going to, although you never know with your party, these aren't the NBCs that the party wants to bring along with them and so on and so forth. All right, so I've just popped him off. Here is this lovely, this lovely doohickey. And then right, oh, there it is. Right now I'm looking for my, e I am using E6000 on these. Reason being... These are recessed in here. If you use hot glue, it's just going to peel right off. No problem, which is the problem. E6000 I found is the best way to get this attached to this. So taking my E6000 out, I'm going to fill in the well area of the mini. You don't want to go too crazy. You basically want it so it's kind of lined up evenish. Cap it. Tell you, you gotta work quickly with this stuff more so it doesn't keep coming out of the tube. I find that's the bigger problem. And then what I'll do is I will take a stir stick and just use it to kind of fill in the blanks a little bit here. So it's a little more smoothed out. Turn them over. Definitely do it on the table. Just pop them on there. And then in a few minutes, he'll be good and ready to go as well. So that is basically how I approach a lot of these minis for what I'm going to be doing um, in terms of improving them. Like I said, next week, I'm really excited and hoping I can use one of these miniatures that Miguel has uh, created for me based off of a couple of the critters I'm pulling from the Creature Codex from Cobalt Press. And then um, I will hopefully have a chance to at least do video pictures, not video pictures, <laughs> picture logs uh, that I can turn into a slideshow. That's where my brain was going. <laughs> video pictures and uh, do little slideshows to show you what I've done with some of the more advanced miniatures like BB herself. She's going to be a full stripped down repaint. I might even get some green stuff going in on her just to add some extra details. But thank you so much for joining me today in the chat. Lovely group of people. I look forward to seeing you next week. I will be going back to the 12 p.m. start time though. This was just one of those quirky. I had to start a little bit later this week. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a lovely weekend and I will see you next week. Same time, same place, different date. Bye-bye.